Front Row MMA here at Assassins in Leicester, and I'm fortunate enough to be sitting next to, uh, I think, Prodigy is probably not an overstatement, Iman Barlow. Uh, Iman, Thai boxing's in your blood. You know, can you, can you tell us just how long you've been doing this? Um, well, I'm 20 now, and I've been training since I was about four years old. I had my first fight when I was four years old, so all my life, really. And, b and before we sort of get into some nitty-gritty questions and details, can you sum up what it is about this sport that you love so much? Um, I don't know, I just love fighting. I think like the discipline, um, I think it gives you a lot of confidence. If I didn't do Thai boxing, I wouldn't be such a, a confident person in life and it's just helped me shape who I am really. You know, I think a lot of people have misconceptions about, well most people involved in any form of combat sport, that they're thugs, that they're mindless. Yeah. You use the word discipline there. Yeah. How important is that to what you do? Oh, it's very dis uh, <laughs> very important. Yeah. Like, I've never had a fight on the street. Like. People have, like, you know, shouted at me, and it, I just learned to ignore it. Like, I don't care. I don't want to get in a fight. I'm w worth more than that. Do you know what I mean? So I think it's very important discipline in this. Uh, and, and you know, you you took. So you've never been in a fight in the street. Uh, you just had a fight uh, a few few weeks ago, I think, or last weekend at, in Melton. Yeah. Uh, how did that go? Oh, I went really well. I won. <laughs> 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 well, uh, again, I'm I'm a I'm a Thai boxing sort of newbie. Yeah. You know, MMA is how I was introduced to Thai boxing. What have? You. How did that fight finish? Was it was it a decision? Did you knock the girl out? Uh, yeah, it went all five rounds. Um, the girl I fought was from Greece, and it was funny. You <laughs> 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 I can have a chuckle that at was that. Such a name. Uh, she was from Greece, and she was 13 times world champion. So I come down a weight to 53 kilos to fight her, and um, I think I was just too strong for her. But it did go all the five rounds but a one unanimous decision and you've got another fight coming up in Cardiff, oh, yeah. and when's that in how many um, weeks away well that's two weeks away now in Cardiff and then that's a week later than I fight in Guernsey and then after that two weeks later I fight in Tenerife is it is it that common for Thai boxers to have such a busy you know no. it, uh, and in terms of sort of medicals and stuff like yeah. heaven forbid like, let's say your opponent you knock your opponent out yeah. do they get to fight again no. next week if they want or no, are they they can't they can't fight it's for another month 30 days but but actually I've never thought about that but I've never been knocked out yet <laughs> well I, I wasn't so, asking yeah, about you I'm not, that doesn't happen yeah. <laughs> but uh, so is it is it common to have so many fights lined up or is it just um, so happen you want to be that busy? Yeah, I want to be that busy. For me, like it is uncommon, but for me I want to be that busy because usually I don't see the point of having one fight and having a week off and then you have to get back into training slowly again. I'd rather fight on the Saturday, go back to training on the Monday. You know, if I've got injuries then I'll just box, something like that, and then just keep him busy, otherwise I get out of shape. <laughs> and I think, again, for guys like me who don't know so much about it, some Sometimes we get confused between Thai, K1, and kickboxing. What are the fundamental? What's the fundamental difference between the, the, the Thai and the K? Is it the elbows? Is it what makes it stand out? Is it a unique um, sport? I'd say like the elbows and the clinching. That's the difference between K1 and kickboxing and things like that. Uh, and the, the the clinch work and the elbows. Even as a youngster, you've trained f f for elbows to the head. Um, well. I when I was younger in England, I never fought with elbows to the head, but in, in Thailand, it's always full tie rules, no matter how old you are. Um, so I have fought full tie rules when I was young in Thailand, but you don't tend to throw an elbow because you forget that you can elbow. And I think, well, if they're not going to throw an elbow, then I won't. <laughs> but as I've got older, I, like, I get more confident in the ring, and then I remember, the, you know, I slow down and remember to throw elbows. So. You know, you're in, you said you have a fight coming up in Guernsey. We're going to be there. It's yeah. your main eventing, uh, a, a mixed combat sports event, uh, MMA. You know, uh, how, is that is that rare, is that a rare apparent occurrence as well, or have you p appeared on MMA cards before? No, I've not. I think I've. No, I don't think I have ever actually. So that's like pretty cool that we're main event and we're girls as well. So. Yeah. And the fight will be in a cage. Yeah. Uh, have you fought in a cage before? And if so, is that gonna is that gonna affect how you do a bit of training in terms of I don't know your movement or strategy or things like that? Um, no, I've never fought in a cage before. The only thing that my dad says is maybe to go on. Um, we've got like this little tram trumpet thing, you know, because the um, the floor in a cage is a bit more springy, yeah. you know, so it doesn't take it out of my legs. So I'm just gonna do a bit of that really. 
Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't bother me. Does the, the shape of the cave, no. the fact there's no cor no defined corners, that doesn't make any difference? No, hopefully, no. Hopefully I'll just stay in the middle of the ring. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're fighting Haley Jane Batter. Right, And yeah. she's... This is a replacement for you. Yes, um, it is. One, why is, do you know why she's pulled out? And two, how do you prepare for a fighter that comes in last minute? Um, I think she pulled out something to do with visas. I'm not really too sure. Um, I just got told that I, uh, she pulled out and I had to find a, he found a replacement for me. Um, I don't know much about Hayley, you know, but good on her for, you know, replacing. Elena, it's really good. Do you do you tend to do research on the opponents you got, but, or with the schedule that you've got, is it just focusing on your game and, and making you a better all-round tie boxer? Um, my dad tends to research them a bit more, you know, because now like a lot of people put things on the internet, so it's easier to search someone. Um, but I might be have like a little nosing, but that's it really. And, uh, as a as a as a fighter, what what do you feel your great your biggest asset is? Is it is it your cardio, your mindset? What what is what is your greatest weapon that you bring into into a fight? Um, I definitely say my cardio. I go from I can go from a fast pace straight from you know round one, and I'll do the same pace all the way to round five and I think some girls can't keep up with that yeah <laughs> no, right. and I, I want to ask a question again I keep referring to the fact I don't know much about Thai boxing but the white crew yeah. I mean could, could you explain one what that is and two can can we expect to see it when you're fighting in Guernsey are we gonna because apparently for those people who have seen them live they're one of the most awe-inspiring things in combat sports they're put goosebumps on people's neck. I didn't know that. Um, I've just been doing it since I was younger. What it is, it's a Thai traditional dance to music that you do, um, which pays respects to your trainer and your family, you know, for helping you out kind of for the fight. Um, someone asked me the other day, like, do you get points for it? It's You don't get points for it, you know, doing a better Y crew or a longer Y crew ain't going to help you in the fight. But for me, um, when I come out for a fight, you know, I have my entrance music on and I'm all like, yeah, ready, pumped up, you know, entertain the crowd. And then I get in the ring and do my Y crew and that's the kind of thing that puts me in the zone. So I like doing it. Again, I, I, I've heard, uh, it, and you've dispelled a myth, because I have heard that if a fight goes to a draw after five rounds that they will look, that, that people do look back at the white crew and you can confirm now that that's not the case yeah no I've never heard of that if they do then that's cheating <laughs> <laughs> you know you've you've done you started some training at like a combat gym in Nottingham um, yeah. with Karsten Lenoir and were you ever have you ever been tempted to to do a little more of the ground game and a little more of the of the MMA I had one lesson with I don't know if you know him Ross Poynton yeah yeah Ross um, the gladiator and I, uh, yeah, I didn't really enjoy it. I enjoyed it. It was like good learning new stuff, but it's just not for me. I found it a bit too, I don't know, sexual. Ah, yeah, sort of the grappling, two hands yeah. on it. Yeah, actually, I suppose there's nothing sexual about punching someone in the face. I guess. No, it's okay. <laughs> Do you want to tell us about the contract you signed and what that means for you? Yeah, I signed a contract um, the day that I won my world title for Infusion uh, in London. Um, it's a three year contract. Um, I have six fights a year minimum. Um, yeah, that's it really. Six fights a year minimum and, and it's over three years. Yeah. It's a silly question, it's a cheeky question because you should never ask anybody about but you know, is, is, is there money in Thai boxing? Um, not so much in Thai boxing but this infusion it's like between Thai boxing and K1 you know so there's a little bit of money in there for me so yeah, it's alright. <laughs> And again, I know uh, y your family, y you guys live and breathe Mil Muay Thai. Do, y do you guys ever just sort of get a chance to go and watch it together? Do you, do you sort of go and enjoy it like that? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, we've got a lot of, you know, that's the thing about Muay Thai. You get friends, I've got friends all around the world and it's amazing. Um, and if any of my friends in, in um, England are fighting and I do get that chance to go watch them, then I will go support. You know, because support means a lot in fighting do you hear when, when when you're in the ring do you do, can, do you hear the crowd does it play, does it uh, affect your performance does it pick you up yeah i think definitely it gives you that confidence boost like in um the o2 in london the crowd were amazing you know and that just boosted my confidence up so much because i was against a tough opponent 
that was from London. Oh, it was honestly, it was amazing. They were all chanting my name. <laughs> and uh, again, does, uh, is there any? Do you ever feel any sense of of pressure? Uh, especially, I know, I know, Dad trains. I know you've got Ty, Ty, your Ty, your brother. Yeah. Who tra do you ever feel that you know? That, do you ever feel any additional pressure to to represent the family when you fight, or is it all about them on? Um, no, I don't think there's any pressure there. I do sometimes feel pressured to win, but I want to win myself, do you know what I mean? And I know if I, if I do lose again, then it's to a good opponent, because every fight I train my hardest, I do what I can. I never go in the ring and think, oh, I didn't, didn't do this, I didn't do that, you know. I don't let myself give me like you know that doubt so I just do everything I can before I get in the ring you seem like you're very focused and driven and I'm gonna use the word young lady and I hope I don't come across as being you know somewhat smarmy there but there it, there's lots of different kind of organizations within Thai boxing uh, is, it, is it your goal to become a world champion in each of them um, I don't really understand all the organizing. <laughs> Sweet, no, that's awesome. Yeah, I know, it's I really know. bad, but yeah, like whatever. I don't. <laughs> I think like titles now don't mean as much anymore, which is a bit sad. But you know, I'd rather fight the best in the world to become the best. You know, that's my goal. And you know, if there were, if you could lay out sort of, you've got three years with Infusion. If you could lay out the next five years. Where do you see where do you see yourself and where do you see yourself competing in five years time? I mean, I know it's a long way away. Maybe at the Olympics. I don't know. Is there an op? You see, forgive my ignorance. Is there an opportunity for Thai boxing to to be at the Olympic Games? I'm trying to get it in, but maybe not in the next five years. But hopefully, I'll be young enough to still, you know, compete. That would be amazing. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask a question about that. I'm gonna complete <laughs> gonna completely branch off there. Safety requirements. I mean, yeah. how how how, do you, how would that work? Do you have any clue? It'd probably go down to amateur, you know, shin pads, head guards, elbow pads, and all that. But that don't bother me, you know. I've I've fought professional, I fought amateur, I fought kickboxing, I fought K1. I can adapt to anything. I think that's what the experience I've got has brought me. So. And uh, once you've made a pro debut, once you've started a pro career, are you still allowed to take amateur fights as long as it's you know not being paid, or is that kind of frowned upon? I don't really know. That's a great answer. Huh? <laughs> I love asking these questions. I think yeah, I don't see what's wrong with. I know loads of people that have, that are pro. You know, professional fighters don't fight with shin pads and go to amateur competitions. You know, like the world championships. That that is amateur. Huh. So yeah, why not? Well, I, I really appreciate your time. I know you did a three-mile run to get here. That's how anxious you were to speak with us today. And I know, I know you've got some training going on. But before we let you go, is there any friends and family you want to give a shout out to? Any sponsors you'd like to mention? Uh, I'd like to say what? Say like hi or thank you. You can say hi and thank you. The more people you say hi to, the more people. Are, the more okay, hi to my mum and dad. I'm a brother. I love you. Uh, thank you to my manager Infusion, Edwin. Van Oos, um, also Vinny Shawman and Kieran Kettle. Thanks to my sponsors, Tough Sport, Boost, Oxygen, and God Standard Nutrition. And thanks to everyone at Assassins. Thank you ever so much for spending some time with us. It was a pleasure meeting you, man. Thank you.